Hey guys, DevonTexYZ, and uh, this is a movie review on Into the Storm. And, you know, originally I really wasn't going to see this movie because I'm not really too fond of those natural disaster type movies, but, you know, I gotta say this one was pretty impressive, to say the least. So uh, let's take a closer look. Alright, for the interest of time, I'm going to try to make the summer as short as possible. Uh, there are two things happening at once. There's Vice Principal Gary Morris and his two sons. They're trying to create a recorded messages for a time capsule-like project, and at the same time trying to prepare for commencement ceremonies for the end of the year. And at the same time, there is Pete, who is a, a veteran storm chaser, and his team are just going through uh, towns to try to find uh, tornadoes, you know, try to capture footage, try to just boost their popularity, I guess. Um, the commencement ceremony gets cut short because a tornado rips right through the, uh, the school, taking out part of the building. And uh, after that whole fiasco, though, uh, Gary Morris notices his, you know, he realizes his son, his oldest son, is trapped in a mill with another student. So he, he and his youngest son uh, travel across the town to try to get to the mill. They eventually do meet up with the storm chasing crew, and while Pete was hesitant at first of taking them in because he was just more, he just more worried about trying to capture the footage he needs, you know, trying to, you know, get the tornadoes, you know. Uh, in the end, he does allow them to travel with them. So pretty much they were both traveling along, trying to dodge obstacles along the way, like different tornadoes, whatnot. They do manage to get to the mill. And they barely save uh, the lives of both of them, uh, the older son and the other students. But then they soon realize that all the existing tornadoes start to form to an uh, to an F5, and that it was going towards the same school. So they hurry, they were quickly going back to the school, try to warn everyone to get on buses, to leave, try to get away as quickly as possible. And most of them do. But the bus that uh, the Morse is on and some of the other people get trapped behind fallen power lines. So they ended up having to go to a, uh, a storm drain to try to take shelter there. But the storm drain wasn't going to hold. And in the end, Pete, for a courageous act, he ends up sacrificing himself by using the help of his armored tank, uh, the Titus, to uh, try to hold down the, the barricade on the, uh, the storm drain. And it, for the most part, it does work, and unfortunately, you do see Pete uh, sac get sacrificed in the end. Uh, the F5 tornado eventually dissipates over time, and pretty much all the survivors just look through, they just kind of look through life and, and a new meaning, you know, just kind of thankful that they actually survived through it. Alright, for pros, there are a few things. Um, for one thing, I do like the humor that they try to add in this movie. You know, it's not just a straight up horror movie, they actually try to lighten the mood with some uh, humorous moments. Uh, especially at the parts where you do see the rifling storm chasing crew, where it's just these two drunken idiots who are just trying to capture uh, shots of the, the tornado so they can put it on YouTube to get some hits. Uh, I mean, that's pretty funny. Which, this also leads me to the next pro. Uh, I do like the fact that. It, you know, it kind of feels like a more modern version of the movie Twister. That's what it kind of reminds me of, really. Uh, I mean, if you've ever seen Twister, I, I recommend seeing it. It's pretty pretty decent. Uh, but this movie kind of almost takes the same approach, but just up, ups it up, you know. It makes it more modern with the whole technology phase into it, and I do really like that. And then also, obviously, I do like the whole special effects with the tornadoes. Um, I mean, it's pretty insane, you know, with all the destruction, all the... You know, the whole natural disaster kind of thing, especially at points where the tornado becomes a a fire tornado. Uh, there's one point in the movie, and then just in the end when the the tornadoes combine each other to form the F5, I mean that was just pretty amazing. All right, for uh, cons, there are a couple of things. Um, the whole tornado concept I do like, I like the special effects, I like the devastation, but when it comes to a natural disaster film, going with the tornado is kind of the most natural decision, you know, it's probably the most obvious choice to go with, um, you know, it's just been played out for uh, for a long time, you know, there are some movies like The Day After Tomorrow, the, the Ice Age thing, at least that was a little bit more original, uh, 
But you know, when it comes to tornadoes, it's just been played out so much. And then the next thing is, this movie is done in a style of found footage, which I really don't like. Um, mainly for the fact there's just scenes in the movie where it's just, the camera gets so shaky or it gets disoriented to actually see what, it, what you're supposed to be seeing. And also the fact that the characters have to come up with some kind of bogus reason as to why they're holding up the camera, why are they filming, you know, like, or like why they're missing important shots in the movie. You know, it, it just kind of always bothers me as, as to if this is supposed to be a real life situation, you know, would you really be filming in, in the middle of a, a crisis like that? You know, it, it just always gets to me. In conclusion, I would say this movie gives what it promises. You know, it's into the storm and you're pretty much into the storm. Um, you know, this movie is pretty good for those who really like those natural disasters. You know, seeing the chaos, destruction, and devastation. And you know, for the most part, it does give a lot of action. But that's pretty much what this movie does: just complete action. You know, but in terms of a plot, it's pretty basic, more or less, and it's just kind of taken a little bit right from uh, Twister. And also the characters, for most of them, they don't really have a uh, any development whatsoever. So for that, I would give this movie a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's a pretty slightly above average movie, and I still think it deserves at least one look. So catch in the theaters if you can. Uh, this is Devil Hunter XYZ, and until next time.